Hello and welcome to the Cybrary IT Secure Coding course. My name is Sunny Ware and we will be going on this journey together learning about secure coding techniques as well as how the attacks are done and the appropriate mitigations and countermeasures that we can put into our application code. So our agenda for this course is first there'll be this introduction which is what you're watching now. We're going to have some additional videos that go through the lab setup, some demonstration about some tools that we're going to use, and then a very short description of the vulnerable web applications we'll be using. We will be covering OWASP Top 10 for 2013, and we're going to be spending a lot of time in those categories. Likewise, we're going to cover the SANS Top 25 items, particularly the areas that are not covered in OWASP. We'll briefly look at some active defense techniques, and then we'll finish up the course with some threat modeling. Now first, just to let you know a little bit of background about myself, I come from a programming and architecture background for over the past 20 years. I also author several security books. One of the books you could actually use as a textbook to complement the material that we're going to be going through in this class. The title of the book is Secure Coding Field Manual, and it is available on Amazon. If you would like to contact me, you can reach me at my Twitter account, at SunnyWare. So why should we learn secure coding in the first place? Well, obviously we know that we need to protect our applications, which of course contains our intellectual property. And there are many, many reasons why we can get into protecting those applications. Anything from business reputation to basically making sure that our company stays in business so we have our jobs. And then, of course, there are government mandates and particular regulations that are now requiring organizations to provide secure code training to their developers. So what exactly are the risks that we're trying to address as we cover this material? Mainly, in a nutshell, we're trying to address exploitable code. Now, exploitable code could be the result of various things. Two of the main areas would be defects or malware. Obviously defects are unintended. These are programming bugs that programmers do and inadvertently create exposure points inside of their code. And then of course malware would be that intentional vulnerability, something injected into the code to make it exploitable. So what exactly are we going to cover? We will cover the OWASP Top 10 for 2013. We will also cover the CWE SANS Top 25 for 2011. Now, as we go through each section, there will be case studies that we'll talk about. Also, there's going to be lots of demos of the exploits and mitigations. I'll try to show you some code for the mitigations as we go through those. And then each module will have a hands-on lab where you actually need to perform the exploit against a vulnerable web application. Now we might be using Burp Suite quite a bit. There are also some browser embedded plugins that we'll be using or that you can use if you feel more comfortable. Also, we're going to cover some of these CERT secure coding standards. Now there are tons of these. And so I've only picked out a handful to sprinkle in with our material basically to provide some additional clarification. And then we'll go into some threat modeling. So the OWASP Top 10 for 2013, we're going to go through this list extensively. And then the SANS CWE Top 25, basically we are going to cover all of the categories that are not previously covered in the OWASP section. So I'm listing them out here for your viewing, but realize we'll go into each one of these in depth in our material. Now there are three main categories that I've broken the material up for the SANS Top 25 into. The, the categories include insecure interaction between components, risky resource management, and porous defenses. If we were to take a look at a definition for each one of those, we can see that insecure interaction between components 
is exactly that, where you've got some sort of weakness that can occur during the exchange of information or data or in the interaction of components or modules or programs together. Risky resource management has to do with the handling of your system resources in some sort of weak or risky manner. Now, porous defenses, this is where we have programmers that actually do put some sort of defensive technique in place, but unfortunately, it's not done correctly or it's misunderstood. If you were to try to compare the two lists together, you would realize just how huge the CWE SANS listing is. They have over 700 vulnerabilities or software errors identified, and OWASP is just a very small subset of those errors. And then CERT, of course, this is what I have sprinkled into the content, covers all of these major languages uh, and is, is thick with a lot of details. Please go out to their website and have a look if you see a language here that you code in. So from this point, I would like to direct you to go ahead and start watching the videos that help you through your lab setup. Then I have a video on a brief explanation of what Burp Suite is. And then I have a short video on how you can start up Matilda Day inside of the VM that's available for the course.